Howdy, Rock Buds. It's Papa. Hope you guys are doing good. It's a frosty morning here in Cherokee, North Carolina, where Grammy and I are doing some more hiking in Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Today's video is about green minerals and the green rocks they form. So we're going to find out where those green colors come from and what kind of valuable jewels nature produces that are green. So stay tuned and I hope you like this video. If so, please subscribe. And uh, so here we go. Green minerals and the green rocks they form. First off, let's look at the mineral barrel. Barrel can come in shades of green and blue. So we're gonna include it here in the green mineral section. Barrel happens when an aluminal silicate gets combined with the element beryllium. Hey Rock Buds, aluminal silicate is as its name implies a combination of lumen, aluminum and silicon together. And aluminal silicate is very common in nature. It happens when with the breakdown of potassium feldspar and muscovite mica. Uh, and most clay and mud and silt is made mostly of aluminal silicate. And volcanic activity adds interesting elements to the aluminum silicate, like beryllium, to form interesting minerals. Here's a lovely greenish sample of beryl. Emerald is a very greenish variety of beryl. The greenish color of both beryl and emerald comes from varying amounts of the elements chromium mostly and sometimes vanadium also. Beryl and emerald both occur in pegmatites. So what is a pegmatite? Pegmatites are granite bodies with big crystals. Pegmatites develop big crystals because the molten granite magma has lots of water and it also contains volatile elements like lithium that facilitate the formation of big crystals and sometimes the mix also has exotic elements like beryllium and chromium and vanadium that cause the formation of beautiful minerals like beryl and emerald. On the other hand, Colombian emeralds, which are the finest emeralds in the world, come from a different source than pegmatites. Colombian emeralds come from the mineralization of limestones and shales. And this happens when volcanic activity injects the uh, limestone and shales with very interesting elements like, once again, chromium and vanadium and beryllium that combine with the aluminal silicates of the shales and limestones to form these beautiful Colombian emeralds. Now let's take a look at the lovely mineral and semi-precious gemstone called hiddenite. Hiddenite comes from Hiddenite, North Carolina. And just like beryl and emerald, hiddenite forms in pegmatites when aluminosilicates are combined with exotic elements. And in the case of hiddenite, the exotic element is lithium. Hey Rock Buzz, we've been talking about hiddenite. Hiddenite is really a form of the mineral spodamine in which the uh, coloring agent is trace amounts of chromium. That chromium gets around. If you go to the Emerald Hollow Mine in Hiddenite, North Carolina, you can dig for specimens of hiddenite for a fee, of course. And here we have the mineral amazonite. Amazonite is a kind of potassium feldspar, also called microcline, that once again forms in pegmatites. And the color, the greenish color in amazonite um, is due to trace amounts of the element lead. If you wanna get some amazonite Go to the town of Amelia Courthouse, Virginia, and check out the Moorfield Gem Mine. For a fee, I think you can actually go down into the mine and get you some Amazonite. 
This is malachite. Malachite is a kind of copper ore composed of calcium carbonate hydroxide. Malachite sometimes displays this circular banding pattern, and that happens when successive layers of mineralization uh, occur around a central crystal. If you're familiar with the former copper ore deposits of Copper Hill, Tennessee and Ducktown, Tennessee, malachite was one of the minerals formed and mined there. In any rock buds, malachite forms via mineralization of limestone and secondary weathering, similar to what happened in the case with the Peruvian emeralds. Technically speaking, unikite is a rock because it is composed of about three different minerals. The reddish pink mineral is potassium rich feldspar, the green mineral is epidote, and there's some quartz in there too. Unikite is an interesting rock because it has felsic minerals, that would be the potassium rich feldspar in it, and mafic minerals, which would be the epidote. And unikite happens when a granite body is um, affected by volcanic hydrothermal fluids that inject the mafic elements into the granite. In this way, the, the mafic greenish epidote is injected into the uh, granite along with the orangey potassium rich feldspar and the quartz. Hi guys, Unikite is called Unikite because it was discovered in the Unica Mountains of Tennessee. Here is the mineral olivine. It is an ultramafic mineral. Ultramafic means it is loaded with magnesium and iron. You can find olivine in Earth's upper mantle and it is very, very abundant there. Olivine is a major mineral in the rock called peridotite, also dunite, uh, which makes up most of the mantle uh, of the earth and that makes it the most abundant rock on earth. Peridotite slash dunite is often shoved up on land uh, as part of the bottom of ocean crust that gets caught between two continents that are crashing together. When that happens, its temperature and pressure both plummet and water is added chemically to it to form serpentinite. Peridotite is a fairly hard and heavy rock, but serpentinite is lighter and your thumbnail can usually scratch it. Serpentinite is the state rock of California because it's so abundant there. Okay, most excellent rock buds. That's it for green minerals and rocks. Thank you so much for watching. If this video was useful to you, please subscribe. And I hope you guys have a wonderful fall and winter. Uh, and I'll be coming up with a new video here pretty soon, probably on maybe blue minerals. And this is your rock papa saying, happy rock cutting. Papa out.